Um, all right. And I think it's recording now. Yes, it's recording. Okay, great. So um, as we go on to the next thing, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put you into breakout rooms and have you um, share your Scratch Junior story. So whatever the story is that you um, created this last week for this assignment, I want you to show that to a person uh, that you are paired up with in your in your breakout room. Um, you don't have to go over every little piece of the story, but show them the story, kind of something that you're proud of that you did in the story as well. Share your screen. Uh, when you share your screen and then you click on share, there's a button on the right hand side uh, or a checkbox that says share sound. You're going to want to share your sound so that they can hear whatever sound is in the project. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to open up the breakout rooms. And it looks like we've got, uh, besides me and Shana, 21 people here. So I'm going to create 10 breakout rooms and uh, it'll you'll be automatically assigned to a room. So I'm going to open this up. Let's take about, um, let's say, eight minutes to share. So each of you take about four minutes to share with your partner what you created this week. All right. Hey, Shana. How do you want to do this? You want to start at the front, the back, the middle? Well, let's start at the bottom. Start at the bottom. Man, my computer is like really quiet today. It's really weird. Everything seems quiet. All right. I'll start at the, uh, I'll go one to five. You go 10 to six. How about that? Okay. Um, and I will be a fly on the wall. So I'll turn off my video for a moment so they don't see me sneak in. All right, so I did, okay, so can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, I did the rainbow fish story. Cute. Um, and then, so I'm just kind of proud of like all the movement. I was able to make like all the characters go. Um, awesome. I don't know, what else were we supposed to share about this? Um. I think you get to just show us what you'd made. <laughs> okay. So I just run through the whole thing then or? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I click on the pink fish here and he goes up. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then I click on this one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you. Um, just the next scene. Um, just, um... All right. Let's see. We're in project three. Okay. I did a story about a frog named Fred. It's his birthday. <laughs> I'm just going to play it for you guys. Hopefully everything is set up. Let me just, ugh, this bar is in the way. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to make sure it's all good to go. Okay. 
All right. There's no noise. It's just text boxes. <laughs> Pretty simple, but I had fun putting it together. It's cute. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. The cake is supposed to be on top of the table. It normally is. I don't know why it switched all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah okay i'm gonna stop sharing my screen now maybe if i can figure out how to do that <laughs> um let's see where did that bar go okay here we are stop share okay i'll just i think i'm gonna just turn the camera around ah, sorry. and show it this way my computer just okay. decided like, so mine's based on the monster at the end of this book oh. but it's the monster at the end of this code oh, <laughs> ah, very good. So, it, this is the first one's just kind of the title if you click for over then hello we are done all right so i try to sneak in without being seen into a room <laughs> <laughs> So what's something, uh, what did you like, Gabe, something about Paisley's that you saw? Uh, she used the repeat or the loop function very well mm -hmm. and a couple of her movements uh, that made it really cool. Like hers was uh, a caterpillar that was eating some stuff and then turns into a co cocoon and then a butterfly. So there's like some shaking and it was pretty cool. All right. Thanks. Good job. Did you do the very hungry caterpillar? I did. I love <laughs> that story. It's awesome. Yeah, great. it was good. I even figured out how to draw it. Um, I liked. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I liked Gabe how he had a lot of dialogue. Like he used dialogue really well, and it was like it was like a really well developed story, which was awesome. Some Gabe, as you did that, lots you of envelopes. A, a, that's what I was gonna ask. You used you know, envelopes to do that. That's yeah, cool. I I did use the envelopes to do that. Good, because if you use timing to do that, you get really frustrated really fast. <laughs> I imagine so. You do it, you read it, you see how long it takes, you do it, and then you change something in there, you go back, it's like, oh man, I have to change my timing. Yeah, envelopes are a beautiful thing. <laughs> I did use timing once, but other than that, I just I kept the envelope. Good. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely places to use timing, but overall, like for the conversation back and forth, that's great. I'm gonna pop into another room and tell give people about one more minute to finish. Oh good, thanks. Okay. We're going to really speak.
All right. Looks like I think we got all of us back. That's great. So uh, I saw a lot of fun projects. This was this is always fun to see what you create with these. So uh, just real quickly as a class, um, we can share as a big group. What's something that you noticed in coding with Scratch Junior that you uh, learned beyond what you learned in the code.org assignment in the first week? I felt like we could really put it in practice and make it our own. So I thought that was really cool. Awesome. So what are some ways that you could see this in practice? I don't know if you're talking to me specifically, but um, yeah, just before I definitely did like, you know, the mazes and things, but it's like it now it was new and different and I had to think of myself, what am I going to do? And so I just thought that definitely changed it a little bit. And so. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Emily. That's so the, one of the things I really like about coding, I, I love the code.org stuff, but if we just kind of stay at that puzzle solving level, uh, that's what it feels like we're doing. We're just solving a puzzle and there's some predetermined outcome that we're trying to get to. But making it your own is what I really like about coding. It's open-ended and you're trying to solve a problem, but there's no direct solution to it. And so you really do get to make this your own. It was really fun to see these stories, even though Scratch Junior is pretty limited in the types of things that you can do with it. Uh, you were able to do quite a bit uh, and make it interactive. So hopefully you're able to take this and just share it with uh kids in some of the classes that you might teach or even have them make up a story or work with the story that you're creating and make it uh, more interactive. So uh, what I want to do now is actually I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. And I'm going to um, let's make sure I get everybody here. Perfect. OK, so what I want to do here is um, that's our Scratch Junior. I've said that today we're going to learn another tool called Scratch. And I had somebody ask, what are the differences between Scratch and Scratch Junior? Um, they're actually not even made by the same people. Scratch was made first. It's the most commonly used tool to teach kids to code around the world. Um, I did a study where I asked teachers all around the world uh, in 23 different countries what tools they use to teach kids to code. And the answer uh, I got overwhelmingly was Scratch. There's lots of different tools, and you're going to see those different tools as we go throughout the uh, semester here. Um, or some of those, uh, but there they are two different tools. Scratch Junior was based off of Scratch as an inspiration, but they called it Scratch Junior because Scratch is popular and the Junior was to emphasize that it was for even younger kids, right? Um, although, uh, as you'll see here in this class, I've I've uh, had kids as young as kindergarten and even preschool use Scratch, so it's totally doable to use. It does require some reading, uh, which Scratch Junior didn't. So uh, I want to get into it and talk about how we're going to do that. If you go to scratch.mit.edu, we're going to go ahead and we're going to code together today uh, and introduce ourselves to Scratch. How many here um, have used Scratch before? I think there were one or two of you have used Scratch. Okay, so Cecilia and Caitlin. Oh, no, wait. Who raised her hand? There's two of you in there. <laughs> um, I don't know who's who yet. I need to memorize everyone's name. Is it Caitlin or is it what's your name? Okay, you're Caitlin. Okay, so Caitlin, how have you used Scratch? Are you able to talk? Yes, sorry. Um, it's very similar to Scratch Junior, like you were saying, just like with words. It's a lot of block coding, but there's a lot more things it can do. And yeah, it has words and it is basically the main difference. Okay, basically the main difference. What about you, Cecilia? How have you used it? Um, I used it. I, I had to use it for class in high school, but my younger brothers are really into it. So we make projects for each other. Um, still, they don't have phones, so I'll just send them a project and we make like little games. So my youngest brother's in third grade and he uses it all the time. It just has a lot more functions that you can use and a lot more characters and you can keep it simple if you want, but it also has the potential to be so much more complex. Absolutely. Yeah, there's some people who do some crazy stuff with it. So, well, let's do that then. Let's go ahead and we'll go to scratch.mit.edu. Uh, this is this the screen that you'll see when you log in. What I want to do is I want to introduce you to it today. So we'll do a code along. 
Uh, and that's what we'll mostly do over when we're doing these online classes. I'll have you code along with me. Um, you'll need to sign in. So you go click on sign in. If you haven't yet signed up for an account, uh, you'll go ahead and click on the join Scratch button. Scratch will then send you an email. Make sure that you respond to that email because it, that email is what responding to that email is what allows you to share your projects publicly. And you're going to need to do that in order to turn in your projects. You'll do two Scratch projects here in the middle of class and potentially one at the end of class. It's that, that'll be up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and just log in with uh, my username that I've got here. So if you have a username, you can log in. If not, and I just typed the wrong username. Um, can I multitask? That's the question. Um, the answer is no. So uh, we're going to use this. If you don't have a login already, it's OK. You can still use it today. Uh, logging in allows you to save your projects, though. So I, I encourage you to do that. It's a pretty quick sign up um, as you do that. Once you've logged in, you can see here they've got, you know, hey, some what's happening. Scratch Online is a community for kids. So they're pretty good at monitoring the community. And if anybody comes in and says anything um, and, and that's out of their sort of community rules, they're rude, uh, they're pretty quick to get after them and get them off the platform. So it's a, it's a safer platform for kids. That being said, you really don't need them to participate in the social aspects of the online forum in order for them to use Scratch. And we're not actually going to be using any of that in this class. We're just going to go straight to create. So in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see create. And I'm going to click on that create button. And that's going to give us a, an entirely blank project. So I'm going to go over what is in this project as we look at it. You can see this main big area here. This is my coding area. And we'll play with this in just a minute. Over here on the right-hand side, I have a stage. And I have a sprite in the middle of the stage. And this sprite right now, this is Scratch Cat. It's named Sprite 1. Uh, and you can see other uh, features or other properties of this cat um, in the middle of the stage here. So uh, you can see right next to the name, you see an X and a Y coordinate. Right now, that's 0, 0. So we use and actually uh, use a Cartesian coordinate system uh, to place our sprites on the stage. Uh, if you want to see that, you can actually change the stage backdrop to be able to see what the coordinates are or to just any other backdrop that you might do, like you changed scenes in Scratch Junior. So let me show you how to do that now. Over on the far right-hand side, you'll see there's something that says stage. And under stage, it says backdrops one, and it just has a plain old white backdrop. If you go to the bottom, you'll see there's a picture with a plus. Hover over that and click on Choose Backdrop and click on the, um, the magnifying glass icon. If you click on the paint icon, you can make your own. If you click on the surprise icon, you can choose one at random. I really don't know why you would ever choose one at random, but there may be reasons. Uh, and the one above that is upload a backdrop. So if you have a backdrop you've created yourself, some picture you've gotten from somewhere else, you can go ahead and upload that picture in here as well. Uh, and that's already a feature that Scratch has that Scratch Junior didn't have, is the ability to easily upload other pictures. So I'm just going to choose from the backdrops that already exist. And you can see if I scroll through these, there's a lot of them on here. I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom. And the third one from the last says XY grid. I'm just going to choose that for now so that you can see kind of what this looks like. In the middle, there's 0, 0. But you can see if I move to the right, I've got a 100 on my X and still a 0 on the Y. Or I can move up to this spot. And my cat, you can see, is almost 100, 100. I can actually go in here and place it right at 100, 100. And I can move that cat around the grid. So that's how I change the backdrops. If I wanted a different backdrop, I could come in here and say, choose backdrop. I'll choose something like, um, let's let's choose a the boardwalk. How about that? So now I've got this boardwalk, and the cat's on the boardwalk, right? What are some other features or properties that you notice that we can change about our sprite? So we, we can change its name. In fact, it's always a good idea to, to name your sprites. And I'm going to ask you to do that with your projects. Name your sprites, because as you get lots of them, you don't want them all to be named sprite one, two, three. You want to be have good coding habits. So uh, what's a good cat name? Who's got a good cat name out here for us? Uh, 
Blues Clues. Blues Clues? Is that what you said, Sophie? Yeah, I thought of a cat. I don't know why, but that is a dog. So All right. <laughs> that could Blue's be confusing. Clues. We'll just call this blue. How about that? We'll call this cat blue. It's not confusing at all. You know, uh, we're we're all adults. We can handle it, right? Um, that's good. We'll call our cat blue. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over and show you some of the other ways that we can code this cat, right? Um, before I do that, though, what are some of the other properties you notice that we can change about the cat? The direction. Okay, we can change the direction. Okay, what do you suppose? It says right now 90. What do you suppose that means? Who said direction? I'm, I, I, I heard you talk, but I didn't see who it highlighted. Oh, that was me. I guess it's probably... At some 90 degree angle, I'm thinking. Okay, so if I click on it, it actually shows you where the direction's pointing right now. And you're right, it's at 90 degrees. So if I wanted to zero, I could see the zeros in this case pointing straight up. If I go to 180, I'm going to be straight down or 270, which is the same as negative 90 as I go this way, right? So yeah, I can actually kind of rotate my cat around in all sorts of directions. I'm going to leave it 90 right now. I can also change the size. It's at 100%. I can say, hey, make that 150%. And now my cat's bigger, right? I actually liked it at that 100% size, so I'm going to leave it at 100%. And it says show, and it's got the eye. I can hide or show my cat. A lot of you, I noticed in your Scratch Junior projects, you wanted to hide a sprite at the beginning and have it show up at a certain time. Unfortunately, in Scratch Junior, it starts by showing it, and then it'll hide it really quick when the scene enters. In Scratch, you can have it hidden immediately. Right, you don't have to show it and then hide it. It can stay hidden to begin with, and uh, you can then tell it when you want it to start showing up. So this is what we've got here. I've got our our cat in here, blue, and over here on the left hand side, you can see we've got three tabs. We have the code tab. This has all sorts of different code. Throughout the next four weeks, we're going to use every single one of these uh, types of code. So each circle represents a whole bunch of different uh, categories of coding blocks. The blue are motion blocks, so you can see I have things like move it 10 steps, turn the cat around a certain number of degrees, go to a random position, go to some specific X, Y. Uh, the looks, this are, allows me to use speech bubbles with the cat. It allows me to switch costumes with the cat. It allows me to uh, change its size, or it has these effects, these color, graphic effects. I can change the color or other things about it, the pixelation. Uh, the sound, uh, this plays sound like you might expect, uh, and we can play with those in a minute. And the events, um, Evelyn, from last week, what are events? What do you remember events to be? Um, events are like like action, or no, they're like the starting point. Perfect. They're so like, like the, the starting points. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. What were you going to say? Oh, they're just like, like when you click on it or when you start on it, it does the action. Excellent. Excellent. That's a great way to think of it. They're the starting points. Uh, and then the other thing here I'm going to show today is control. Uh, so we're going to start playing with uh, all these first five right here today, just a little bit. The control has the flow of the code. So the weight blocks, the repeat blocks, uh, and what we'll talk about next week are the conditional blocks, if else blocks. So we're going to play with all of those. Uh, your first assignment with Scratch is going to be to create an introduction to uh, yourself for your students. So this will be a teacher introduction that you can share. So regardless of grade level, this should work for you. Um, you're gonna share an introduction uh, about yourself, four different facts about yourself. You might share some facts about your classroom, make it interactive so that the students, as they get to know you, maybe they click on different things, uh, maybe they answer yes, no questions, uh, and you have them do some different stuff. So we're gonna start by playing with that today. Uh, I'm going to pretend that the cat here is is me, right? Uh, this will be our teacher for the day. And so uh, we'll have the cat start off by just introducing itself. Um, does anybody remember, though, what's the first thing you do before you start coding? Maddie, what do you think? Do you 
like plan it out, like do a decomposition. Perfect. We plan it out. We're going to decompose this, right? So before uh, we go ahead and just jump into the code, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a feature that Scratch has, and most coding languages have this. Um, so from now on out, here on out, we're going to be able to put our decomposition straight into our code. I'm going to right click in this area that has um, sort of this big blank area. And that when I right click, I can add a comment. When I add a comment, let me make this a little bit bigger. Is that a good size for everybody or is that still too small? Okay, thumbs up. So I'll do this. So we've got this comment and you can see I got have kind of have this uh, sticky note, this yellow sticky note. I'm going to go ahead and say something. I'm playing this out. So I'm going to say something like my goal, um, goal is to introduce myself. Okay. And the way that I'm going to do this is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my cat in the lower uh, left hand, let's say left hand corner. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna say hi or something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, tell them my name. After I tell them my name, I'm gonna have, um, we're gonna have some letters appear. So we'll say letters uh, appear, spelling out my name. And just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to animate those letters. Animate the letters. And then I will ask the learner what their name is. All right. That's kind of a lot of stuff here. So let's let's end that here. And then maybe we can continue that later. But this kind of gives us a good idea of how we might start planning this out, right? Uh, planning it out ahead of time just gets you in the right mindset, helps you think through some of the logic. So I'm going to place my cat in the lower left-hand corner, but I'm going to use this flag as a starting point. So I'm going to go to events on the left-hand side, and I'm going to grab the when green flag is clicked event. Alyssa, what's your question? Sorry, I'm just wondering how you add the comment. I can't figure it out on my computer. You right-click on the blank area in the middle. So if I right click, I should bring up a menu that says add comment. Do you see that? No, it's not working, but I wonder if it's just my laptop so I can figure it out later. Is it yours a Mac or a Windows machine? It's a Mac. Two, do a two finger click in that area. Two fingers. Ah, it worked. Yeah, okay. That's a great click. Perfect. Thank Good. you. I'm glad you asked because that's often the issue with people are like, wait, I'm not sure how to do it on a Mac. Perfect. Thank you. Good. Good question. So um, green flag. I got the green flag from events. So um, Hannah, I know we haven't even coded in this yet, but uh, which of these areas of uh, code, which of these sort of circle, yellow, I can't say circular, <laughs> sorry, circular categories of code do you think we'll use to place the cat in the lower left-hand corner? Um, I feel like he's already in the left, lower left-hand corner. Okay, now he's not. <laughs> Do we place him there with our mouse just on the right side? I could place him there, but if I move him throughout the thing, he won't automatically reset. And that's a difference between okay. Scratch Jr. and Scratch. So I want to make sure to reset him every time with code. So I've got him here. So which of these do I'm going to use? Motion, look, sound, events, control. What do you think I'm going to use? Motion. Perfect. Let's go to motion. Okay. And then... If you notice right here, there's about five blocks down. It says go to, and then it's got X and Y. And if you look over here underneath the stage, my current X and Y is 159.88. And if you see this block, the block is also 159.88. Um, so I'm going to move my cat. And you see how it changed my coordinates there? The cool thing is it also changed it in this block over here, right? So I find it's really handy to move the cat to where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just grab the go to block and pull it out. And now if I pull it somewhere else and I click that green flag, it snaps to that spot every time I click the green flag. Does that make sense? Perfect. So now that we've done that, we've done one. So um, let's see, Gabe, what's your guess? How would I get the cat to say hi? Which category of code would I use? You would. <clears throat> You would use sound. Okay. Or actually, no, sorry, look. 
Okay. Now, why did you, you said sound? Because you were thinking actual sound, right? And yeah. then why did you change to looks. Because uh, I clicked on looks and it says say hello and has all these speech bubbles here. Perfect. So if we wanted actual sound, we'd go to sound and we'd record a sound, right? So actually, Gabe's right. There's two ways of doing this one. I'm going to go ahead and use the text box for now. So I'll just grab the say for say hello for two seconds. And that way it's not up forever. Um, as somebody mentioned this week in their what they learned comments, it's really helpful to code a little and then test it instead of coding a whole bunch and then testing. Uh, the reason for that is if you code a lot and then test and it doesn't work, it's a lot harder to debug. All right. So I'm going to code just a little bit right now and test it out. And if it is working the way I expect, I'm going to move my cat over here. My cat should snap to the corner and then say hello for two seconds. Okay, the cat says hello, snaps the corner, it's working. Okay, great, so we've already done first two things here. Now I need to tell them my name. So um, Madison Chapman, which now I've got two Maddies in here. So Madison, do you go by Maddie or Madison? Um, I usually go by Maddie. Sorry, that's why I responded to the last question. I forgot there's uh, two Maddies in this uh, class. That's good. I didn't realize it when I said it. I apologize. So, no, it's okay. uh, so Maddie, how would I then tell them my name? Like, after saying hello? Yep. You would add, say, hello or whatever it says. Okay. And then you could, instead of saying hello, you could say my name is and put your name. All right. So let's do this. My name is Mr. My name is Blue. I'll just go with Blue. Okay. So my name is Blue. All right. We've done this. Okay. So, so far we've gotten through half of our, our plan pretty quick. Uh, we've made the cat show up. Uh, we placed it in the lower left-hand corner. The cat says, hi, we've told them our name. The next thing I want to do is I need, I'm going to have letters appear spelling out my name. So this is the first time that I'm going to need other sprites. If you see down here uh, beneath the stage, you can see we've got blue is our only sprite, but there's a little cat symbol with a plus in the upper right hand uh, corner. Go ahead and click on that and click on choose a sprite. Now there's lots of sprites that are pre-built in. I'm going to spell out my name. So up top, you'll see there's different categories. I'm going to click on the last one, which is letters. And my cat is orange, so I'm going to choose the orange letters, but there's a lot of different built-in letters here. But I'm going to go ahead and grab, let's see, my name is Blue. So I'll grab a B, and I'm going to put the B up here. So go ahead and do that for your own name right now. Uh, when you're done, give me a virtual thumbs up. So I'll see, see what's going on there. So I'm going to repeat that again, just to show you how to do it. I'm going to hover over, choose a sprite. I'm going to click on the magnifying glass. Click on letters, and I'm going to find the L for the blue, and I'm going to spell blue up top. So go ahead and do that for the letters in your name as you spell out your name. And when you're done, give me a virtual thumbs up. I have to say, I'm really glad you chose a really easy short name for me to spell here. It's great. It wasn't something like Garfield. Or whiskers. All right, we're getting some thumbs up. And uh, you're welcome to play around with it while you're waiting as we're waiting for other people to get their thumbs up here. I, I, it's just one of those things I find that doing as you're coding and as we're doing stuff in class is always helpful. It's kind of like when you're in a language class, repeating things to yourself while other people are doing stuff up front. Okay. And I've seen about two thirds thumbs here. Great. Look at that. We're all thumbs. Uh, has a whole new meaning. Okay. So now that we've got this and, and you may be getting in your last few letters, that's okay. Um, what I want to do now is I said the letters need to appear spelling out my name. So Sophie, wait, did I already call Sophie? I can't know. Sophie, you said something, huh? I can't remember. Sophie, well, anyhow, I'm going to call on you again anyway. Um, if the letters have to appear, what does that mean? What state do they need to be in to begin with? So they need to be hidden at first. 
They need to be hidden. Okay, so let's hide them. Sophie, with you still on here, how do you think? I'm gonna let's let's start by hiding the blue. How do you think? I mean, the B in blue. How do you think we would do that? You probably need to hover over and click the B. Okay. And then you could just move the toggle over. Okay, so I could just in. move the toggle over and look at that. It works. Okay. Uh, so I could actually do that with every single one of these. Before I do that, though, I'm actually going to do it in code because I want to make sure that every time I click that green flag, I tell the computer, just like I had to snap the cat to the position, I want to make sure that the bee does disappear. You're right that I can just turn the visibility off on each one of these, which is a great way of, of doing this to begin with. Let's see if my L is left. Now they're all hidden, right? So what I'm going to do, though, I'm going to go to my B. I'm going to go to Events and grab that green flag. I'm going to, uh, in fact, I'm going to put a comment on this, but my comment for this one is going to be a little bit different, right? So again, to do a comment, you right click, but instead of clicking on the open area, I'm going to click on this block of code now. So right click on the block of code and click on add comment. And now you can see it has attached the, uh, it's attached that sticky note to my block now. And if I move my block around, the sticky note moves with it. This is really helpful as you get into more complex code with lots of code to code the little pieces and decompose that, right? So I'm just going to plan out what I want this to do here. I'm going to say um, hide at the beginning, show after the cat uh, says its name. And then I'm going to do something um, funky with graphics. How about that? No, you know what? Instead of that, I'm going to... Uh, I'll turn in a full circle. How about that? Turn in a full circle. And I'm just going to leave it at that for now. So that's that's my breakdown of what I want the B to do to begin with. So I need to hide it at the beginning, show it when the cat says its name, turn in a full circle. Okay. So I have the flag here as the beginning right now. I'm going to go back to looks. And in looks, if you scroll to the bottom, they have a hide and a show block. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab that hide block and put it in here. And now when I click on it at the very beginning, the B is gone. Of course, it was already gone. So we're going to have to make it appear so that we see that work again. Um, now I have an issue. How does the cat tell the letter B to, to start showing itself? Jolie, in Scratch Jr., what did you do to get one sprite to tell another sprite what to do. Yeah, I was just trying to remember how to do that. I was following along as you we were doing it. And I don't know if it would be as a different um, or another event. It is actually another event. So let me go to blue. And on blue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to events. And at the very bottom of events, it has broadcast. Do you see those two right there? has broadcast a message, broadcast and wait, and when I receive a message. This is just like the envelopes in Scratch Junior, right? So it's, it's just called something different here. It's called broadcasting. So what I'm going to do is as soon as Blue has said his name and waited for those two seconds or her name, um, I'm going to then go ahead and broadcast a message. And if you click on the drop down, you can go ahead and name an, your message. Just like you could choose a letter or a color of an envelope in Scratch Junior, you name your messages here. So I'm going to name my message. I'm going to say show letters. So now when he, when when Blue is done saying, I'm Blue, my name is Blue, she's going to broadcast this message to all the other sprites to show themselves, right? So if I go to B, I can now grab under events at the very bottom. There's this when I receive, and I've got show letters as an option. So it's like when I open the green envelope or when I open the blue envelope, whatever. In this case, it's when I open the show letters envelope, okay? So this is when I receive show letters. And uh, Natalie, do you remember, where was the show block? Where would I find the show block? Um, that was in the looks section. Perfect, go to looks, scroll down, find the show. And now let's just test it out. I'm going to click this. A uh, cat says, hello, my name is Blue. Uh, and sure enough, the B shows up, right? I actually want that to happen for all of the letters. So I'm going to have to code the same thing on all of the letters. 
The good news is there are shortcuts that you can use to copy code from one sprite to the next. Let me show them to you really quickly. So I want all of these things to do both of the things that the blue did, all the other letters. So I'm going to hover over the when green flag is clicked. And I'm going to click it. I'm going to drag it all the way to the L. And watch what happens. The L sort of wiggles. See how the L wiggles? If I drop that on there and I click on the L, that code is now transferred to the L, which is super helpful. It's a huge time saver. Do notice that the comment didn't come over with it. So it's interesting. You copy code over, but comments, um, they are specific to the sprites. So I'm going to do the same thing with the show. I'm going to see when I receive show letters and do that to L. And now if I go to the L, it's kind of hard to see this, but they both appeared in the same place. And that's kind of weird. So if they show up like that, I can just click it and drag it. Or I could right click on the canvas and click clean up blocks. And then it organizes my blocks in a vertical uh, format for me. So I'm going to do that with each of these. I'm going to click and drag the when green flag is clicked to the U. And the same thing with when I receive show letters. I'm going to do the same thing to the E and just do that on the, each of those. And I'm going to click on the, the U. And I'm going to right click and hit clean up blocks. And on the E, right click and clean up. Oh, it looks like the E only got the one. So I need to put when I receive, drop it on the E. And now I'm going to clean up my blocks. And now if I try this out, Cat says, or Blue says, hello. She says, my name is Blue. And then the letters appear. Awesome. We're doing great. Let me go back to my plan. The plan is over here on uh, sort of the main uh, sticky note that I put on Blue. I've had the letters appear spelling out my name. Now I'm going to animate the letters. So I'm going to do some animation different on each one. On the B block, let's make it, I said, turn in a circle. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to, uh, after I show it, I'm going to have it go ahead and turn around. So if you go to motion and I grab the turn, I'll turn it, uh, let's say, counterclockwise. If I want it to turn a full circle, uh, Emily, how would I make it turn in a full circle? Would you... I'm like trying to do it real quick. So it's just like how many degrees is it? Like 360? Yeah, 360. Or... So let's try that. Let's okay. see what happens. So I'm going to click on this. Blue says, hello. My name is Blue. And then shows up. Did the B turn 360 degrees? Ah, uh, it didn't visibly do it, but we didn't get an error either. So this is one of those times we have to start debugging this, right? Uh, anybody have a guess as to why you didn't see it turn 360 degrees? Emma, you've got a guess, but I can't hear you. Sorry, I just mounted it. No, I was saying like maybe he doesn't have space. He okay. might need to move up a little bit. That's my guess. With the like, lead? I'll put it right. Yeah, it, Let's try that. Hello, my name is Blue. Okay, so that was a good guess. And what she's doing is important. This process of trying to figure out what is wrong, right? We've narrowed it down to the B. We've narrowed it down to when it's happening. The what isn't quite working. I saw... And I apologize, whoever's next to Caitlin, tell me your name. I'm Caroline. I Caroline. was on, I did have a screen on Zoom and then I accidentally exited out. So um, I'm assuming that because it says turn 360 degrees, since that's in a full circle, it's just going to do the thing instantaneously. So in order to make it look like it's actually a circle, we need to have it um, turn a certain amount of degrees at a time and then have that repeat however many times. So I actually went ahead and did that. So I divided 360 by 15 degrees since that's the original one. So I did 15 degrees and then had it repeat 24 times and that made it spin. Perfect. So let's do that. Where did you get the repeat from? Tell me where that you find that. Um, control, okay. I think. Control. And yes. I grab this <laughs> 10 and I put it around the turn 15 degrees <laughs> and I say, do that 24 times because 24 times 15 is 360. So let's mm -hmm. test it out now. It says, hello, my name is Blue. And now we see it rotate. Perfect. In fact, if we wanted to slow that down even more, 
we could put a weight inside the repeat loop and instead of it will say wait like let's say a tenth of a second because we're going to do it 24 times see what happens hello my name is blue and it's a little bit slow i actually liked it without the weight in this case but you may end up using weights a lot so i'm gonna i'm gonna take that over here and instead of just having code hanging out like this that's called orphaned code it doesn't have a parent. It doesn't have an event that's triggering it. I'm going to delete this code by dragging it over here to where the code is and drop it. And now it's gone. All right. So that's a good coding habit. Make sure you clean up your code, get rid of the stuff that's just hanging out, not doing anything. So uh, we'll do one more thing and then we're at our time. So I'm just going to go to the L and I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to change the color effect on the L, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to control. I'm going to grab a repeat and I'm going to change the color effect by 25 and I'll repeat that 10 times and we'll see what happens when we do that. I'm going to move my B back up here and let's start it off. Blue says, hello, my name is Blue. And we can see it sort of changed the, uh, the, the color a lot. I probably do want to wait in that one because that was kind of fast, but that's it. Um, this that's our introduction. We actually used the first five categories of code today. Well, we didn't use the sound, but uh, we used most of those categories. Start planning out what you want your introduction to look like and start working on it uh, as you start to experiment with Scratch. One of the assignments this week is just to go out and look at other Scratch projects that other teachers have created to get ideas. But I encourage you, uh, it is a it, it'll take us two weeks, I think, to do this. Uh, project and it's two weeks because you'll need the two weeks to work on it. So go ahead and get started working on your next uh, coding project. It won't be due for two weeks, uh, but you will have a project due this next week of looking at other people's code while you're also coding. So that's it for today. I'll hang around and answer questions. Uh, and then the next class will come in in about five minutes. Thanks. Thank you.